Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. If a nation or a group is immune from criticism and can create laws to quiet people and cause mass censorship, what would this mean? Well, what it would mean, folks, is this, is that it would enable a group or a nation or a group of particular people to do evil and never be held accountable. Now, this would be the epitome of evil and cowardice on a scale that we've never seen before. Surely no one believes that any person or group that could do this would have any love for the Almighty Father or they would be blessed by the Almighty Father. We stand up for ourselves and for what is right because God Almighty instills in us the ability to determine what is wrong and what is right. However, in today's world, most folks, because they live through the technology, they do not know what's really wrong and what is really right. But once we understand what, is, what the truth is, once we do this, then we must have the courage to stand up for what is right. Now, if that is lost, then evil will have free reign to do as it pleases and no one would ever say a word. And I'm telling you now, right now, brethren, that's where we are going when you talk about a tribulation. That's what a real tribulation is, is that evil will have free reign to do as it pleases and no one would ever say a word except the very few. And the evil of this world will try to get rid of them. Now, as we stand up for the truth, for God Almighty, our Father, and Jesus Christ, the weak, the unborn, the hurt, the poor, and those who are shunned, deprived, and done wrong, we can expect to be called names. The devil will label you a hater, even though you are preaching love at the highest level. The devil's children will label you anti-Semite, a Nazi, a racist, and so much more nonsense. This is where the sheer desperation of the devil's children is manifest. They become so scared of the truth, they only know how to counter with false attacks. This shows their true colors when they are told of God's truth. They immediately come back with an assault of lies. Now, for me, I am not anti Semitic in the least. Uh, I can get along with the ancient Semitic people, and I may have ancestors there. I probably do. And those up to date, and the ancient Semites or the Semites of today are scattered all over the earth. I have driven people away from my channel, and especially at the old channel, because I am anti Nazi. I have been anti Hitler, and I have made many white folks leave the channel and tell me I'm not white enough. Surely my father frowns at, at the devil and his children when they accuse me of things that I've never been because I tell the truth and many of you tell the truth in a time when most people are too damn cowardly to speak the truth. This says so much about these people and these evil spirits. They have all the money. They have so much earthly power. They are educated at the finest demonic institutions. They are held in the highest esteem by the blind masses. And from the lowest to the highest, these people and the evil spirits cannot be honest and ever acknowledge when the truth is spoken. They only know how to come back with a lie. For this, may the Lord Jesus Christ re rebuke them. Please say it with me and mean it. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke them. Their entire existence is based on a lie. Now, I am nothing. I don't claim to be anything. I'm hardly anything special. But what I am, and what I am is from my Father. And yet the devil and all his children cannot refute a lowly person like myself or you when we speak the truth. This shows you the great and mighty power of God's truth. When his truth is spoken, it is mighty and powerful. You need not scream, cuss, shout. You simply need to stand with your Father in Jesus' name and speak the truth. American men have become the embodiment of Pop-Tarts. They are soft in the middle. They watch porn, filth, and Hollywood's nonstop violence as they live out their fantasy of trying to be tough by watching movies from the devil's children. This is incredibly sad, but this is what has happened to America and Western culture. They talk about toughness and guns, but do not have the courage to be nothing but kitty cats. There are not many male lions among the men any longer. Israelite ancestors would be ashamed and not recognize this weak bunch of Pop-Tarts who call themselves men. Now let us move on with this message from our Father in the name of Jesus. What if I don't stand with Israel? Well, let's talk about that. If you are to conquer a nation and not let them know that you are being conquered, you do it from within. You pretend to be their friend as you plot their demise. The Israeli spider web has demanded the United States Congress, the Senate, the President, and churches adopt policies designed to do whatever benefits the state of Israel and the Zionist movement, not the United States, not the people. Even if it means sacrificing the lives, freedoms, and way of, of way of living for the people of the United States, that is power. Okay? Imagine what I'm telling you, folks. That a leader of another country can come to your country and dictate policy that will undermine the people, and the people will cheer for the conqueror. 
Israeli arrogance is derived from the power of its supporters deeply embedded in the evangelical, the church, is where it all starts. The military, entertainment, political, and financial power structures in the United States and the world. But its primary allegiance comes from the United States and all Western culture countries. And the two greatest tools that they have is all forms of media and the church. Israel, by its own admission, controls the United States. They have an entire spider web of political organizations, government officials, propaganda mills, media moguls, talking heads, shills, billionaires, millionaires who sow allegiances to the Zionist movement and not the United States. The churches, Hollywood, and the Internet are designed to cater to the every desire and whim of the state of Israel. This is not hate, brethren. This is just a fact. In fact, this has been admitted by them. You have countries and Western culture that are being conquered and ruined, and this is their way. This is what you're, what you're having, brethren, is that God Almighty is allowing these white countries to be destroyed uh, because they have turned their back on the Father. They have denied Jesus Christ. Now, many are going to say, well, this is the exact opposite because these are the Judeo-Christians. And as I just stated, these are the same people that applaud the conqueror as their lives and the lives of their children decay right in front of their eyes, but yet they would rather cheer for the conqueror than they would for Jesus Christ and, and would rather look out for the conqueror than they would their own children. And somehow they believe they are doing God's work. They are doing the work of the devil. They simply don't know it because God has blinded them. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. Not on your best day are you going to con God. Not on your best day are you going to BS the Almighty Father. Now, you may think that you can, and you may try it, you may attempt it, and you may even live it and think that you are. The Almighty Father knows all of us, the true us, the real us, what's hidden, what's tucked away. He knows if you if you really have anything for Him. He knows if you're trying. He knows if you just can't get there. He, he knows if you simply are pure evil. He knows the real you. He knows those who really want to try. And those are the ones, in my opinion, that He blesses and brings closer to Him, draw near to God, and he will draw close to you. We must remember that as we go forward, that many of these Judeo-Christians, they are more dangerous than the conqueror because the enemy will look like us, and occasionally they may even talk like us. However, when you look closely, we have nothing in common with those who feign allegiance to Jesus while giving their souls to the devil and somehow, as I said, thinking they are standing with God's elect. I recommend that each of you in the next week, whenever you get some time, take a few minutes, open up your Father's Word, and reread the parable of the wheat and the tares of Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 48. Read it again. For this, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke the tares. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke those that would rather side with the devil's children than Jesus Christ. Please say it with me and mean it. A couple of months ago, I did a video exposing the double standard about the flag issue. For example, there is an assault right now currently to remove the Confederate flag, yet nobody has the sense and discernment to see that the six-pointed star flag is an abomination to God Almighty. He calls it the image of the devil, the image of Cume, um, in Amos 5.26 and Acts 7.43. Yet the same supporters, these Judeo-Christians, they will seek to destroy the Confederate flag while totally ignoring God and His Word. Now, however, listen to me, many are going to learn the hard way that they'll not be ignoring the Almighty Father for too much longer because the cold, cruel winds of change are blowing and people are going to feel and see the wrath of an Almighty God. There are currently agents all over the Internet and the blogosphere that do nothing but spread lies, fear, disinformation, and misinformation. Their sole purpose is to protect and shield any criticism from the state of Israel. And let me explain something to you. It's so bad that most folks who support Israel, they know this, but they still cannot bring themselves to actually say that's wrong, that's unfair, that's not just. Where is the protection for you and I? Are we not afforded special rights and considerations? Who is there to protect us? It's not Israel. It's not Google. It's not Babylon. It's not the churches and bankers. It is the one true father through his son Jesus that protects and sustains us during these dark and, and gross hours. And I want you to think about that, because if you really were to get down to it, if, if Almighty God is teaching a lesson that can most folks can never comprehend, it would be that without Him, you cannot make it. You can rely on doctors, you can rely on bankers, you can rely on television, you can rely on men, and you will always fail. You can call out the devil. You will fail. 
It's only through the Father and Jesus Christ that you will truly succeed. Now, for these double standards and lies, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke them. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you for it. For it is the one named Jesus who condemns you and judges you, not me. Say it with me, brethren. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. Because they do not take care of you. They do not love you. They have nothing but hate and contempt for you. Let me ask you a very serious question. And I humbly ask you to do yourself. To do the best that you can to answer. Because it's a very tough question. But be honest and look deep inside of yourself. And then think about the world that you are in. What if you, and I'm talking to all of you. What if you went out? tomorrow and right in front of you say you went out to get something to eat grocery store whatever and you seen a person 12 feet from you beating a helpless baby what would you do I mean what would you do would you shout scream maybe call the law maybe pull a weapon or simply go along with your business and say this is not my business I'll let God figure it out now you cannot say this does not happen because it happens every damn day in fact it is happening right now as I pin this I understand that many people are not capable of defending themselves physically and or innocent victims. Yet, we would at least, brethren, have the courage before God to scream like hell and try to bring attention to the evil act. I want you to think about where, where we are at now. Every day, the devil and his children assault this earth with poisons, with filth, with violence and hate and, and corruption, and nobody says a damn word. In fact, the people that claim to be of Jesus run toward them. Think about where we are truly at. Somewhere in this world and in Western culture countries, some person or people are beating, poisoning, killing, raping, stealing, and abusing another person and people. And there are people who see these crimes and they say nothing. They turn their damn heads and do nothing. For this cowardice and for this cruelty to the innocent of this world and to the animals of this world, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke them. Say it with me and mean it. Mean it because I want them to be rebuked. I want evil to be rebuked and I want them to feel it. But you have to say it and you have to mean it. The rallying cry in churches and societies across North America and Europe are, we support Israel. United with Israel. Standing with Israel. A night to honor Israel more. However, what if after careful consideration that comes from prayer of the love of my Father through Jesus and the knowledge of his holy word, I came to the conclusion that the state of Israel is not the people in the Bible called Israelites. What if after careful consideration that comes from prayer and trusting my father to teach me about his ways and what is right, I decide my beliefs are contrary to the state of Israel, some Jewish people, Christians, Muslims, and many of society. How can this possibly make me a bad person? Do I not have this right? Do I not have the right to be my own person and come to my own conclusions based on my relationship with my creator and Jesus? I have espoused no hate. I have not promoted violence in any manner. In fact, I have told my brethren that we must love, we must be wise as serpents, we must not aimlessly seek battle. However, if we cannot stand up for what we believe to be true and stand against evil in front of our faces, how can we possibly, when the time comes, stand with Jesus Christ? Now, I will ask you again, why would any person, people, or nation, and I'm talking to the state of Israel and its followers, why would you consider me a bad person and censor me and censor us for simply saying we have beliefs that are contrary to your beliefs and values and thoughts wholeheartedly do we not have that right i have never said that i hate all jews christians muslims atheists or anybody else in fact i've never said that i hate anybody i do not wish ill on any person or people i simply don't i have endured and went through pain that i would never want to see any other person have to go through i have never said that any person who calls themselves jews or the state of israel are bad I never have said such asinine things. I do not promote hate nor violence. However, I do tell the truth as I see it. I do say that we are to be strong and that we can be through our Father and Jesus Christ. We can be strong and we can overcome. I do say that we should stand up for right. However, how will any of you stand before your Creator on the Day of Judgment and give an accounting if you have to admit that you deliberately turned your head to the abuse, murder, and poison of children, animals, and all peoples. And that's what they want us to do, is simply turn our head. Again, how can this possibly make me a bad person for standing on the side of my Father's word? Jesus Christ is the truth. I stand with the truth. There are laws in countries that prohibit people from criticizing the state of Israel and the Jewish people. 
How can this extreme bias be fair and just? This bias and extreme censorship is the complete opposite of my father's values and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Read Romans 1.18. Romans 1.18. The state of Israel and all of its followers who support them are telling the world that you cannot criticize them under any circumstances. Now I ask you, with an open mind, wouldn't this give the state of Israel and its family free reign to do as they choose? If any people or person is above reproach, what would that say about the true nature of the oppressors and what the victims must fear from speaking out against people that they claim to love or to support? It's fear. It's nothing more than fear. Is there any free-thinking person who could possibly justify this? Is there any truly fair and godly people who could possibly say this is from God? For, the, for this evil behavior, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke those who do cruel things and censor people and suppress the truth. Please say it with me and mean it. Say it with me and mean it. And may the Lord Jesus Christ, may he rebuke those who falsely accuse those who speak the truth because they hate the truth and live in darkness. Please say it with me and mean it. In Jesus' name. This type of suppression of the truth and suppression of the speech, this behavior as our Father teaches us is from the darkness. It is from evil. It is from those who are afraid their deeds may be, may be made known and may be brought to the light. Such biblical facts about Jesus, the Almighty Father, the devil, the seed of the devil on this earth, the synagogue of Satan, mystery Babylon, God's chosen people, Israel, Israelites, the murder of Jesus, creation, Cain, and so much more are concealed and lied about. The agents of evil deliberately make videos, write articles, and the media and the alternative and social media promote the lies nonstop. And any truth about these subjects is immediately censored and banned. Inevitably, it comes down, these people have a complete denial, fear, and hatred for the Father, Jesus Christ, and His Holy Word. This is why you have so much hatred toward the Bible. So many videos and so many people trying to deny the Bible. For all of the bluster, bragging, and self-appointed honor that the evil of this world does, you will never see evil and or any of these people act as brave warriors. They rely on murder from the back and the constant concealment of the truth. They will never under any circumstances face you from the front unless you are crippled and maimed. They will never ever debate you with, when you have the truth, they will never ever debate you. When you see these mock debates, when you will see people try to take somebody on, you have to understand that they are between agents of the same side of the coin with a controlled format that will pro 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 prohibit any and all truth from being spoken. Now I ask you, when you see these mock debates, and that's what they are, they're skits, they are between agents of the same side of the coin with a controlled format that will prohibit any and all truth from being spoken. Now I ask you before God Almighty and Jesus Christ, how can a people who behave like this ever be called chosen of God? The question would be chosen to do what? Chosen to do what? Jesus Christ says, he that is of God heareth God's words. He that is of God heareth God's words. He that is of God doeth God's will. It's not complicated unless we try to make it complicated. More importantly, they try to make it complicated. The state of Israel pays college people to go online and paralyze, monitor, and censor all debate and censor any truth and censor comments about them. They were caught doing this. And all social media, including Google, censors and has technology in place to hide, block, erase, and delete any comments that seek these answers. There is technology in place to monitor videos before they are even downloaded to see if they mention certain words and or phrases that they deem dangerous. Interestingly, many of these words are biblical and some of the phrases are from the Bible. Why? Because they fear the truth and this truth condemns them and they hate it. Yet the masses are so dumbed down and cowardly they say nothing. In fact, the cattle, known as the majority of Americans, point the finger at the wrong culprits. Depending on what blind side you're on, the enemy has the people blaming invisible enemies known as the left versus right, Republican versus Democrat, conservative versus liberal, and red versus blue. And currently they are making it black versus white or vaccine versus no vaccine. There's always one versus the other, so you can never look at them. How childish and absolutely idiotic to see these groups fight one another. It's embarrassing to see so-called adults acting this stupid, yet they are. 
and they come by the millions upon millions, Fox News, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, ABC, and an entire spectrum of alternative media platforms and social media plays one against the other nonstop. People buy into this lie, and they allow themselves to be mere game pieces in a demonic board game. The Bible says if any man bring another gospel to you other than this one, we are to refuse them. Right now, the entire world, except for a few pockets here and there, are living in a completely fabricated gospel that was made up by the devil and his children. They teach lie after lie, denial after denial. They preach a false peace because they know not the real peace that comes from Jesus Christ. In these last days, we must be humble, peaceful as we possibly can be. We must be readers of his word and doers of his word. We must remember that our Father's will is being done. The scripture tells us time after time that we are not all the same. Some people belong to our Father and many to the devil. Very few seek the truth, love, guidance, and protection that comes from the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. For in the final analysis, brethren, we are here to serve and to be faithful to the end. The devil, the evil spirits, Israel, Catholicism, Freemasons, uh, Judiacs, bankers, liars, cons, and those who do evil have very limited power. For all power has been given unto Jesus Christ. For years, people have talked about the last days, end times, and now they are seeing it. And the reality has hit them right between their faces, and they seem almost frozen by it. Don't be. Embrace it. Embrace it with courage and keep praying and praying for one another. We don't know the appointed time nor hour. It may be in the distant future. Live your life. Love one another. Seek his approval daily. And if we truly do this, if our sole mission every day is to have the Father and Jesus smile upon us, how can we go wrong? Stay away from the lie and those who make the lie. Keep your eyes and your spirit on Jesus every second of every day until the end. Jesus is King. Amen.